Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Please join me in praying the prayer to Saint Michael the Archangel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into the hell Satan and all evil spirits who roam through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Today's Mass, we offer all your intentions, especially those intentions we've been sending to our online Mass. We also offer this in this Mass, the intentions of all the parishioners of the Santuario de San Antonio Paris, and also special intentions for all our frontliners, and also to all our birthday celebrants, for Mrs. Mary Ann Chan and her intentions today on her birthday, and the intentions of her husband, Mr. Jose Marie Chan, and the rest of the Chan family. Also for Antonio Andaloso celebrating his birthday today. We also pray for the fast recovery of our sick brothers and sisters, especially Nestor Almasan, Meg Reyes, Aloysius Reyes, Carlo Citadel Mabini, Wendy Bori, Doctora Ros Hamco, Doctora Tess Ronquillo, Father Juhon, Julie, Joey Oi, Sami, Julius, Eric Burlaza. And for the eternal repose of Fernando Diaz, the brother of our, our brother priest Agapito Diaz, Emilio Angeles, Odelia Arroyo, Adela Boan, Joey Mendoza and Arturo Bori. Today, Holy Tuesday, and our celebrant for today's Mass is Father Baltasar Ubico, OFM. Brothers and sisters, let's start our celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. To prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let's pause for a moment and humbly acknowledge our need for God's mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. 
Almighty and ever-living God, grant us so to celebrate the mysteries of the Lord's Passion, that we may merit to receive your pardon. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Hear me, O islands, listen, O distant peoples. The Lord called me from birth, from my mother's womb, and he gave me my name. He made of me a sharp-edged sword and concealed me in the shadow of his arm. He made me a polished arrow and a quiver he hid me. You are my servant, he said to me, Israel, through whom I show my glory. Though I thought I had toiled in vain and for nothing, uselessly spent my strength, yet my reward is with the Lord, my recompense is with my God. For now the Lord has spoken, who formed me as his servant from the womb, that Jacob may be brought back to him, and Israel gathered to him. And I am made glorious in the sight of the Lord, and my God is now my strength. It is too little, he says, for you to be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob and restore the survivors of Israel. I will make you a lie to the nations, that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. Your response will be, I will sing of your salvation. I will sing of your salvation. In you, Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your justice, rescue me and deliver me. Incline your ear to me and save me. I will sing of your salvation. Be my rock of refuge, a stronghold to give me safety. For you are my rock and my fortress. O oh my God, rescue me from the hand of the wicked. I will sing of your salvation. For you are my hope, O oh Lord, my trust, O oh God, from my youth. On you I depend from birth. For my mother's womb, you are my strength. I will sing of your salvation. My mouth shall declare your justice, day by day your salvation. O God, you have taught me from my youth, until the present I proclaim your wondrous deeds. I will sing of your salvation. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Hail to you, our King, obedient to the Father. You were led to your crucifixion like a gentle lamb to the slaughter. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, o Lord. 
Reclining at table with his disciples, Jesus was deeply troubled and testified. Amen, amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. The disciples look at one another and at that loss to whom he meant. One of his disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was reclining at Jesus' side. So Simon Peter nodded to him to find out whom he meant. He leaned back against Jesus' chest and said to him, Master, who is it? Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I hand the morsel after I have dipped it. So he dipped the morsel and took it and handed it to Judas, son of Simon Iscariot. After Judas took the morsel, Satan entered him. So Jesus said to him, what you're going to do, do it quickly. Some of those, or none of those reclining at table realized why he said this to him. Some thought that since Judas kept the money bag, Jesus had told him, buy what we need for the feast or give something to the poor. So Judas took the morsel, left at once, and it was night. When he had left, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and he will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you a little while longer. You will look for me, and as I told the Jews, where I go, you cannot come. So now I say it to you. Simon Peter said to him, Master, where are you going? Jesus answered him, Where I am going, you cannot follow me now, though you will follow later. Jesus said to him, Master, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Jesus answered, Will you lay down your life for me? Amen, amen, I say to you, the cock will not crow before you deny me three times. The gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Throughout this holy week, the church with gradual clarity and deeper and intensified way would want us to reflect and appreciate the meaning of Christ's passion, death, and resurrection. That his death, according to John, is not annihilation and decay. On the contrary, it is a glorification. Today, as in yesterday's gospel, Judas Iscariot took prominence as his betrayal will set into motion the crucifixion of Jesus, as Judas will hand Jesus over to the chief priests and the scribes. We take note of two details of today's gospel reading. First is Jesus' foreknowledge of the betrayal that Judas had or will do the plot that he had in mind. Yet Jesus did not dissuade him. He did not stop him. Still, not only that, Jesus did not shame Judas by trying to reveal among his peers of his evil plot. He plainly said, do what you want to do and do it quickly. The disciples thought they're going shopping or he's going to distribute alms to the poor because Jesus did not reveal his evil plot. The second detail that we have to take into consideration, typical of John, after Judas had gone out, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. Jesus was referring to his own death 
and yet he called his death glorification. We remember that it is aim vocabulary, the same vocabulary that Jesus mentioned when he raised Lazarus back to life. That the sickness of Lazarus would not end in death, but through it, the glory of God is even made more manifest in his death. Death is glorification. That means through his death, there is a transformative effect. The loss of life would mean the gift of eternal life. Therefore, this gospel throughout the week and perhaps throughout the rest of our lives it will be asking us the question, how do we look at death? Is it annihilation? It is glorification. Perhaps we have not asked those questions ourselves. But perhaps the most pointed question would be, how do I live my life in the here and now, in the midst of the inevitability of death? We have not asked this question directly, but we have lived and answered this question by our inordinate fear of suffering and death. We want to evade, to escape, and be triumphal over death. And how do we express it? By the great philosophy of hedonism, eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow you will die. Since death is annihilation, you might as well enjoy every second of your stay in the planet. When you do, with your materialistic interpretation of your existence, we become competitors of a limited pie in the sky. We have to outwit, if not outdo and exploit each other to get that pie and prolong our life. But Jesus is offering us another way of looking at death, which is its redemptive and transformative effect in our lives. The death is not annihilation. Death is not decay, not corruption. It is going back to the Father and experience the fullness of life. So instead of fear of death, Jesus is inviting us to welcome and embrace death, knowing that death is a glorification. Therefore, the death of Jesus invites us. Death is not an event to which we are powerless. It's not an event that is trust upon us. We have power over death as followers of Jesus. We are the one who is going to give meaning to this event. And we can freely decide what to do with our own life in the midst of the transformation that it brings. If death is inevitable, there are three options that is left for us. We could die a natural death, overeating, over drinking, unhealthy lives. You can die of old age. You can commit suicide in the sense that death has or life has no meaning in the midst of its inevitability and death loses its power over you since you take away your own life. Or the third option that Jesus is going to present to us is lay down your life for others. A meaningful option in the midst of inevitability of death. Let me end this reflection with one of the many uncritical rumblings and pronouncement of our president. When he said the, the frontliners are fortunate or lucky that they die for the country. Let me quote in the vernacular his exact words. Oh, yung mga doctor, nurses, attendants na matay. Sila ay nasawi para mabuhay sa kapwa. Napakaswerte nila na matay sila para sa bayan. This perspective and mentality that death is either a fortune or a luck 
is your expression that death is a powerful force in our lives to which we are powerless. No, the frontliners were not caught up by death. They freely decide what to do with their own lives in the midst of death. They knew that death awaits them in the words. Yet, they freely decide that a meaningful life in the midst of death is offering our lives that others may live. Let us humbly present our petitions before our Lord, always remembering the suffering He endured in order to make salvation possible for us. Let our response be, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who feel betrayed by friends may avoid bitterness. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our that sinners may not be discouraged, but seek forgiveness in the sacrament of reconciliation. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our that those who suffer may find the strength to bear their burdens. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That the sick may unite their sufferings with Christ and be filled with inner peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That the COVID-19 epidemic come to a swift resolution with the recovery of the sick, the protection of those who have been exposed, for experts to find a cure, for government and health authorities to take the appropriate steps to hold it spread, and that we, the faithful, act responsibly for the good of all, we pray to the Lord. That the dead may be given a place in the heavenly kingdom, we pray to the Lord. God, our Father, in your wisdom, you permitted your only Son to suffer for us. Through the Spirit, draw us closer to you, that we may express our devout gratitude. We ask you this, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Bring me, dear friends, that is your offerings be made acceptable to God, the loving Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice with your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for a good and the good of your holy church. Look favorably, O Lord, we pray on these offerings of your family, and to those you make partakers of these sacred gifts, grant a share in their fullness through Christ the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. Truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, through Christ the Lord. For the days of saving, passion, and glorious resurrection are approaching, by which the pride of the ancient fall is vanquished. The mystery of our redemption in Christ is celebrated. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty, rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, have heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You indeed call your Lord, the founder of all holiness. May call it therefore this gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave you thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once were giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be put out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this life giving bread, this saving cup. We thank you for counting his worthy to stand in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Broderick, our Apostolic Administrator, all the clergy, and your entire people. Remember your servant, Father Fernando Diaz, whom you have called from this world to yourself, Grant that he was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also all our other brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us, all we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, 
with the blessed apostles and all the saints, especially St. Francis and St. Clare of Assisi, and St. Anthony of Padua, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. You him with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. To the Savior's command and formed by the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, you may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but in the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. Let's greet one another now, the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us your peace. This Jesus Christ, the Lord, by laying down his life on the cross, he transformed death from a loss of life to the gift of eternal life. Blessed are we who are invited to partake of this supper. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The act of a spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. And never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
After the Mass, brothers and sisters in Christ, please join us in our Novena prayer to St. Anthony of Padua. Let us pray. Nor is by your saving gifts, you beseech your mercy, Lord, that by the same sacrament with which you have fed us in the present age, you may make us partakers of life eternal. Through Christ the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May, the, may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God. Prayer to St. Anthony of Padua. St. Anthony keeper of the scriptures pray for us saint anthony provider of of god's poor pray for us saint anthony consoler of the afflicted pray for us saint anthony performer of miracles pray for us saint anthony restorer of the lost articles pray for us let us pray Loving and merciful Father, we thank you for your love for our parish by giving us St. Anthony of Padua for our patron saint. As we express our confidence in your love, we humbly ask you, through his intercession, to obtain for us the favor we humbly ask for. We pray to you through the intercession of St. Anthony, enliven our parish and empower us to be a community of love, of mercy and compassion, growing in your likeness, seeking to mature in our prayer life. Make us bearers of justice and peace in our troubled world and broken humanity. Be protectors of Mother Earth our common home, and defenders of life and human rights. We acknowledge the abundance of your blessings in our lives. Make us reach out more and more to the poor and outcast of our society. Bless the priests, religious and seminarians, our pastoral team, parish councils and ministries, our families, especially the elderly, the sick, and the young. The answer to our prayers may require a miracle, but you have made St. Anthony the saint of miracles, whose concern for our needs is boundless. We acknowledge your power to obtain graces from your mercy with a grateful heart. Whatever your answers will be, and however you grant our petitions, we bow to the wisdom of your will and your love for us. To you, Almighty Father, creator of the universe and humankind, through Christ the living one, in the spirit who makes things holy, be praise and honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
obedient to the Father's will.